What's up? I'm Drew Paul Bell, and today we got a question from a few people about grades in architecture school, and they want to know how much they matter. Luis Mateos wants to know, from your experience, are grades actually the most important factor in finding a job? Also, what are your opinions about grading in architecture school? He's worried about how subjective grades can be. And I got this question from two different people recently, and I feel like I'm, I'm a little worried that you want me to give you permission to slack off in school and make bad grades and I'm not gonna do that. I feel like if you're in school, you should be there to dominate and make A's anyway, even if they don't matter that much, okay? What matters the most? I don't think any one thing matters the most. I think that kind of black and white thinking can really set you up for confusion and disaster. Grades are gonna be one piece of data. They're gonna be one data point that indicate who you are as a person. Now there's a million other things that communicate that too. It's gonna to be included in your portfolio. It's gonna be included on how you present yourself in a job interview. It's gonna be how you, talk in, how you talk with people and communicate. So I don't know that there's any one thing that matters the most. And I would avoid looking for that kind, of a, that kind of a thought process. Because also, how about this, for the people who think that, who, who want grades to not matter, and they're gonna say, oh, it doesn't matter what grades I make. For every one of those, there's another person who thinks, Oh well, I made good grades, so I deserve a good job, and I deserve to be paid a whole lot. It doesn't. It doesn't work like that, right? Good grades don't guarantee success, and bad grades don't guarantee failure either. There's a book by Daniel Goleman called Emotional Intelligence that was released. Uh, I don't know when it was with a couple decade, decades ago, and it completely upended the whole psychology community around uh, intelligence theories. And the idea behind emotional intelligence is that. They, they've done studies and they find that the people, high IQ scores don't necessarily correlate with success in life. There's a very poor correlation in there. Meaning, you can have all the factual knowledge in the world, but if you don't understand the interpersonal skills, if you don't understand how to maneuver the office politics, if, you, if you're an architect and you can't work within a group of people, or you can't go to the city and get a building permit or a variance, or apply to or talk to zoning and planning and all these different groups of uh, organizations, there's a lot of things in place. There's a lot of those things in place that you may not be able to handle. Does that show up on grades? Does it show up in a portfolio? No. Uh, it, it, it's hard to gauge. So there's not one thing that matters the most. Grades are one metric and is one data point. All right. So like if I'm if I was hiring if I if I ran a firm and I was hiring somebody, and they had their GPA on the on their resume or whatever, then if I see that like they've made all C's and they made uh, like if they have like a low GPA, I would prop. I might develop a theory that maybe this person is super unor disorganized and doesn't have their stuff together and can't handle sitting still. Probably doesn't show up to places on time. I'd probably develop a bunch of theories in my head about this person, but then I would test those theories and confirm or deny those things based off like how they talk to me. If they come in and then they're also sloppy and they can't follow a thought, they can't speak with a coherent sentence, and their portfolio looks like garbage. Well then, yeah, then I'm not gonna hire them. And then, in that case, the grade is actually a reflection of a larger symptom. It's, it's, it, it is the symptom, excuse me, that is the symptom of a larger quality, of a deeper quality. And it's just a reflection of that. Meanwhile, you might also have somebody who makes C's, but yet you look at them and you can tell that like, they're actually really well put together and not just about like surface level clothes or whatever, but you look at like their portfolio and you can tell that like, their, their work maybe really speaks to me or through conversation and really talking with somebody, figure out that you think that they would fit. Well, then it doesn't matter that they made C's. So the C, the, the bad grades, well, grades in general, they don't guarantee anything. They don't guarantee success and they don't guarantee failure either. So you also asked about uh, what are my feelings about grades in architecture school. All right, so what about grades in studio? If you're making, grad, bad, if you're making bad grades in studio, should you be worried? I, I always remember that uh, Frank Gehry actually failed his very first architecture class. I think it was like his first or second, and the professor told him, you'll never be a good architect, You're, or you will never be an architect, I think. Uh, it's, it's in some documentaries and some stuff online. So don't, don't, again, don't put too much stock in like one piece of advice. This goes back to the same idea of that, that, that black and white thinking, that total thinking, right? To think that good grades mean success, when bad grades means failure, it's wrong to believe that because somebody told you you'll never do it that's not right either also if you have a teacher who loves everything that you do 
and they think, oh, this is awesome, you're going to be so successful, you're going to, you have so many signs of success, that's not a guarantee either. There's still plenty of time for you to screw it up. There's, there's no such thing as a guarantee. And that's really what I want to communicate through this video. There's no, no such thing as a guarantee with anything, all right? What about Grades and Studio, though, all right? Uh, I think that Grades and Studio are data. Again, it's data. It's, it's feedback. So if you can get feedback from a professor, take that, all right? So if you're making bad grades, ask yourself, why are you making bad grades? Why are your studio projects not doing well? Is it because there's a disorder to your own process? Are you cluttered in the way that you think about the building? Are you slow at producing drawings? Are you slow at producing the project? Do you think that maybe, if, if you're being really honest with yourself, do you think that you actually have a good design of a building that you just didn't represent it well? Do you think that other people are getting better grades than you because they have better renderings? And be honest with yourself, right? Because it's hard to do that. A lot of people, they tell themselves, oh, so-and-so did better just because he has good renderings. But it's like, no, nah, dude, really, your stuff sucks. Like, it's, some, some people really are not doing good work and they blame it on the exterior thing. They blame it on, oh, so-and-so else has better renderings than me. That's why he does so well. But it's up to you to find the truth. It's up to you to really look for the quality. Okay, and you can put two projects side by side and look at them and be like, all right, which one of these is better? You can do this with papers, you can do this with essays. You only have two essays written by people and you can discern quality, right? You can identify quality. You can see what, where it is and where it's not. Use those grades as a way to look at that and figure out about quality, where you, where you stand. You judge your own work and just take your, understand that your professor's opinion about it is gonna be one opinion but the reviewers might have a totally different opinion. Um, any, any one person can have a different opinion. We don't all feel the same way. We don't all have the same kind of taste. Now there's something to say about quality, right? Quality is not entirely subjective. It's not that like, oh, this person thinks this thing's beautiful and that person thinks it's ugly. A lot of times that, that quality is actually identifiable, right? Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. It doesn't really, pay tribute to the truth. So use these grades as like a way to, um, as a way to judge and to get feedback and then to grow, right? Use that to then ask yourself questions to improve more. Don't get too hung up on that letter that you got. Your GPA, your GPA isn't gonna matter when you're on your deathbed. Do grades matter? Uh, I think that they're generally an indicator of a, of a broader quality, but Ultimately, are they the most important thing? No. Okay, so I hope that this helps. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video if you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you next time.